And good morning, or good afternoon, City Council. My name is Mary Ang. I want to thank you so much for this beautiful presentation and for the beautiful company. I'm very excited, particularly about the sign language. And I hope that we can have as much signing at as many community gatherings and public meetings as possible in the future. I think it is a great source of jobs and increases the accessibility for all persons. And I want to thank you also for the closed captioning that is there, and I find it very, very helpful. And I want to thank all the hard work that's coming from Dante's team and it's so good to hear all of you speaking. I wanted to speak specifically about invisible disabilities because I think they're one of the hardest challenges out there and specifically I wanted to share with you a very painful thing about a man who ripped my glasses off my face, crushed them in his hands, threw them down, knocked me down and proceeded to stomp on my skull. So I, I, I'm living with brain injury and I don't talk about it very much and I've had other things such as an extreme instance of strangulation that I um, think may have given rise to chronic neck pain and tenseness in my neck and jaw, which are um, difficult at times. But uh, I found some domestic violence literature about how women who suffer strangulation can sometimes have uh, chronic problems with their necks or with their vertebrae. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I think y you may think of me as a normal person, but there, there's a lot going on there, including possibly chronic depression. And I really self-identify with post-traumatic stress disorder. And what I've read about it is that triggering situations can spike a cortisol response, where a low basal cortisol is accompanying what is known as PTSD. And that'll lead to kind of listlessness and apathy and tiredness and a feeling of chronic fatigue. But the second something is traumatizing and triggering, it can lead to a, an unnatural spike in the cortisol, which it's, it's pretty hard to manage those kinds of symptoms. But um, hopefully, one other thing I wanted to share is what ACLU is doing around sign language. And sometimes in policing, if a person who signs as their primary mode of communication is being apprehended by police, signing can be misinterpreted as a resisting arrest or some kind of attempt to injure the officer. And so I think as much education we can give our police bureau around disability needs and issues and invisible disabilities will help all of us feel less barriers to access and to access state services, especially when we do become victims of crimes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love it and give everybody gratitude that was here today and gave their speeches. Thank you, and you guys are great listeners. That's awesome. Um, I came to speak about they uh, they should have a borough a borough for um, disability lawyers because there's a lot of disability out there that are being pushed around. I mean, I I I've lived with a brain injury. I've been hit by a two-ton log on Easter morning. I got blindsided, but I I can't even go on and tell you it would take. I don't know, days to tell you of what I've lived through and the, the shit that I cannot believe. But um, the way people get respected, I mean, I think I, I always believe that you treat someone the way you want to be treated. And like, I, I have had a, a few things in my life where I struggle with, and, and, and it's hard to have someone reached out and deal with some, or have someone help me to be ADD friendly with me and understand where I'm going through, what I need help with. Well, I, 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 I came here to Portland because I was getting away from an attacker. And, and, and when I reached out in my hometown, I had, there was nobody there fighting for disability. And there's nobody that I could even lean on except my family and my loved ones. And they're living their family life, taking care of their kids, doing what they're doing. Well, and, and you know, once in a while, my sister, older sister would go out of her way and she takes care of four little baby dolls, baby girls. And she'd help me out when she could, but when I had uh, went through a, being attacked, well, I came to Portland and I was I was jumped and sexually harassed in Hill at Knife Point, and all my money was taken to her. the state of Oregon. I was asking for help, and the cops come up to write a statement, and all they said was, "Get off this road and never come back on this road." And I'm telling them I'm hungry, I'm under distress, I have nothing to wear. It led up to an Ace Tavern 
beat, uh, I was beaten, brutalized by officers because I asked for help at a bar and they slid my face across the ground. And then not only that, when I went to court, they laughed about it and grinded my face in the ground. And I've been disabled. I don't, I don't go around. I'm not, I'm not a murderer or a criminal. And I wasn't doing no criminal act, but other than just going to that bar, asking for help. And I just think that there should be a disability of law, lawyers out there. I don't know why, why people deserve to get away with stuff like that. It's not nice. It's hard to be in disability. And I go through a lot of struggling. So it, being courtesy up there, and I give everybody gratitude for fighting for disability and how hard they do fight for them. Thank you.